Okay, welcome to video two of making simple circuits with uh, Arduino and Tinkercad. Um, we're going to use a breadboard for this circuit and also you'll need your Arduino, of course. We're going to actually make a stoplight um, and we're going to then tinker with different ways to control the stoplight. So in this first task, you're going to create a stoplight uh, that is just controlled um, by the Arduino and there's a set time that each light is on and it's just going to automatically um, cycle through um, the code that you give the stoplight. Okay, so what you're going to need, aside from your Arduino and your breadboard, um, is you are going to need three resistors. Okay, so remember you can get your resistors from the bank over here. Um, so you need three resistors, and let's go ahead and put the resistors um, at 98 ohms of resistance. Okay, so remember you're going to get them with a kilo ohms, and usually it's one kilo ohm that they come um, out of your um, toolkit over here. Uh, so you'll need three resistors at 98 ohms, and then you're going to need a red LED, um, a yellow LED, and a green LED. And all the LEDs need to be rotated, and the resistors should be rotated as well. Okay, so you can pause the video um, and go ahead and set that up. Okay, so your 98 ohm resistors, you need three of them, um, and your three LEDs. Okay. Um, so now that you have your supplies, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get going to get a ground connection um, to our circuit. So let's go ahead and put ground over here. OK, and remember common practice to make the ground black. So let's go ahead and um, stick with that and make it black. Uh, and then let's go ahead and put our red LED. Um, we'll start our stoplight here in row five. So let's go ahead and put the cathode um, for our red LED in um, row five, column J. Okay, and then let's go ahead and we'll put our yellow LED. Um, we'll put it, uh, skip two rows. So the cathode of the yellow LED, I'm putting in row nine, column J. Okay, and then the cathode of the green LED, let's go ahead and put that in um, row 13 in that same column, column J. Okay. Um, so let's connect the cathode of each of those LEDs to ground. Okay. So I'm going to need to just create wire there. Um, let's go ahead and go like that and we'll make this black. Okay, so you want to make sure it goes from this um, ground column or rail to the same row as the cathode of your LED. Okay, so I'll double check each of these. It seems to be right. Cool. Okay. Um, next, we're going to add our resistors to the circuit. So remember, we need a resistor somewhere. It doesn't really matter if it's on the anode or the cathode side, but you need a resistor in there somewhere so that we control the, the current flowing through the LED. Um, it's not too high, and it's, but it is high enough to um, make it a bright LED light. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this first resistor. We're going to actually use the fact that this row right here and this row are not electrically connected. So we're going to use that um, fact and uh, take advantage of that and put one terminal of our resistor here in the same row as our anode of our red LED. So that's going to be in row... Um, six okay and our next one goes um in row 10 and our final one is going to go down here in row 14. and of course you guys can make this with different rows and a different um kind of orientation to your stoplight but if if you are just learning um it might be nice to follow along and put things in exactly the same spot i'm putting them okay and again all three of these resistors are 98 ohm resistors and the final thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to connect um, each of these lights to our Arduino. And we're going to want to connect each light to a separate output. Okay, we're going to use the Arduino to tell each light what to do. Um, so each light is going to be doing different things. So let's connect our green light to the output pin 9 over here in our digital output pins. Okay. And it might be nice to kind of color code these wires instead of making all three of these red. 
um, let's let's go ahead and color code and code them according to what light they're going to. Okay, so let's go ahead and make another wire from um, output pin 10, and that one actually goes to row 10. Um, and that goes to the yellow light, so let's go ahead and turn that wire yellow. And then our output pin 11 is going to go in row 6, and it's going to be a red wire because it is going to um, tell the red LED what to do. Okay, so now we have our setup, um, and now uh, we are going to have to um, check our code, okay? So when you open this up, you are not going to have this code written down, okay? You are going to have to create this code, okay? You're going to, you can get everything for this code, um, this block code from this output tab or the control tab. Okay, um, go ahead and pause the video and I want you to set up um, this code right here. Okay, this block of code. Okay, and then I'll go through and, and we'll look at what this code does. This. Okay. So I'm going to start this simulation, um, and we're just going to watch what the stop light does. Okay, so the red light comes on immediately. Okay, so this, this outer bracket says is we're going to repeat anything inside this big bracket a thousand times. Okay, um, okay, the yellow light now came on, and now the green light is on. The yellow light didn't stay on as much. So let's look at what this, this is actually saying. So set pin 11. Oh, let me move this back so you guys can see. Oops. What? Is coming out of each pin. There we go. Okay, um, so set output pin 11, which is the red wire. Um, it is uh, bringing the signal from, from 11. So we're going to set it to high for 10 seconds. You're going to wait for 10 seconds, and then you're going to set pin 11 to low, and at the same time, right after you've done that, you're going to set pin 10 to high. Well, pin 10 is going to our yellow LED, okay? And then you're gonna wait three seconds, okay? So we have noticed that this yellow light is only on for a short amount of time compared to the red and the green light, okay? So after the yellow light, pin 10 goes to low, pin nine goes to high, and pin nine is our green light right here, okay? So you can see that color coding these kind of helps you read your code because um, you're not going to say set red light to low or red light to, to low or red light to high. You'll say set pin 11. Okay. Um, so when this code gets all the way down to the bottom, it is in a loop. So it's going to repeat it a thousand times. So it's going to come back up to the top and say, okay, well, now I'm going to go back and set the red light or pin 11 to high. Okay. And we're just going to loop through. Okay. So this would be a stoplight that is not responsive to if there's no traffic going one way and there's traffic, um, a lot of traffic going the other way. Um, it's not going to accommodate that. It would be a traffic light that just has a timer and it just cycles through um, repeatedly. Okay, I do want to open up and, and show you guys um, not just the block code. We need to stop the simulation in order to look at the text. Okay, but Let's take a look at the block code and the text, okay? So over here um, is our code, okay? And this tells the computer that, hey, well, first we're just gonna set up, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna have three outputs that we're looking at. So we're gonna, we're gonna treat pin 11 as an output, treat 10 as an output, and nine as an output, okay? So that corresponds to the three pins over here um, that we have connected our, our LEDs to. Okay. Um, so this is our loop here for, um, you're going to start the counter, um, equal to zero, and you're going to, um, wait until the count, and you're going to do this until the counter gets to right up to 999. Okay. Um, and this just tells uh, the computer that you're going to add one to your count every time you loop through this. Okay, um, so right here, 
Um, this is the, the written code to tell um, output 11 um, to um, turn turn high or, or have an out have a high voltage or it's five I think they're usually around five volts um, output so uh, and then delay this you will notice it is not in seconds right it's in milliseconds okay we could have a comma right there and it's 10,000 but the code doesn't want commas so <clears throat> we're gonna delay for 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds Okay, and then, so this, this part ends up looking a lot like what our block code looked like. Okay, and you can read through it. Um, these comments right here are not read into the computer. They're just kind of um, for the coder to look at and know what that line of code means. Okay, all right, for um, stoplight number two, we are actually gonna control our lights with a dial. And um, after I finished the first part of the video and stoplight one, I realized that I made the light go from red to yellow to green, which we all know stoplights don't do that. They go from green to yellow to red. So you're welcome if you wanna correct that when you actually um, write the code for the first stoplight, please do. Um, that's just my mistake, but it's it's the same process. Um, it was just uh, flipping flip, flipping the sequence. Um, so feel free to correct that, and I'm sorry I made that mistake um, in the video. In this stoplight, we for this uh, for this stoplight, we are going to be using a potentiometer, which is basically like a turn dial to control which light is on. So at certain orientations, we're gonna have different different lights on. So our potentiometer, we can pull one out right here. And let me zoom in a little bit on the potentiometer. So you'll notice the potentiometer has um, three little prongs on the bottom and it has a turn dial. Um, if we were looking at one in real life, it might seem a little better, but basically this is a turn, like a knob on the top that you can turn. Uh, and then these little prongs down here, um, we're gonna connect each of those into a row in our breadboard. But terminal one and terminal two, one of these needs to be connected to ground and one of them needs to be connected um, to, to the five volt is what we're gonna connect it to, but to a, to a voltage source. Um, so basically the, the potentiometer as it, as it spins around, its resistance changes and um, when the dial's all the way over here, if we connected this one, let's say we had this one connected to ground, our potentiometer is gonna send through this wiper um, an output of a certain voltage that can be read by the Arduino. And the Arduino is gonna kind of turn that voltage into a number, okay? So um, basically we connect to ground, connect to power, and then this will be connected to our analog input, which is over here, this, this section of the Arduino that we have not yet used. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate this guy and put him in over here. I'm going to put his top prong, terminal one, um, in row 23. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect this one to this top one to the ground. Okay, and like usual, we'll just make the wiring black for that. Okay, and then we said the other side, the other terminal, not this middle one, the other terminal on the other side is gonna be connected to power. So I'm just gonna run this right here. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and connect that to power. And I don't think you guys are quite seeing that. So I'm gonna move this over just a tidge. There we go. <clears throat> make it look nice and organized. That's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and make this, this guy pink. Okay, to show that that's connected to our five volts. Okay, so the way we've connected it, the potentiometer is gonna give a, a reading of um, close to zero volts or, um, yeah, it, it, as you approach it, it'll get lower and lower, but close to zero volts, if your dial's turned over here, if it's turned all the way the other way, um, we're gonna get a close to five volt reading. Um, that information, the, the voltage reading is sent from this wiper in the middle. Um, and we're gonna connect this 
to the analog input A0 over here on our Arduino. Okay, so this is where the, informa the information gets sent down this wire, um, and it's a voltage, and then our Arduino is going to read that, and our Arduino is going to spit out a number from 0 all the way to 1023. Okay, it's going to spit out 0 if you're up in this area close to the ground, okay, and it'll spit out numbers spit out that doesn't really spit them but <laughs> um, it's going to interpret that voltage um, and turn it into a number that's close to 1023 okay if it's over here in this this area if your knob is turned all the way over here okay so i have actually already written the code so now that that potentiometer is, is wired up i've already written the code for this so let me zoom out and get this in a position while you're where you might be able to see it running so let's see see that it works so let's start the simulation okay so we have um, our red light on because our dial is up here on the potentiometer if I move it around if I move it right here there reaches a point where it's going to switch to yellow okay and then it's going to switch to green and yours won't do this um, right away just after you've wired it up you need to actually write the code for it so let me go ahead and show you this code I want you to be able to see okay, at least that much okay so let's go open this window up and look at the block code so um, this first thing I've done, so you, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into variables and you're going to have to create a variable for yourself. Um, you can call it potentiometer. I, I called it potentiometer input. Um, and then you're going to use, um, you, you press OK and it'll create this variable for you. I've already done that and mine was potentiometer underscore input. Um, you can, you're welcome to use that one or you can make it, make it shorter. Mine's kind of long. I'm going to cancel that because I already have it made. Okay. Um, but the first thing you want to do is you want to set that potentiometer input to read analog pin A0. Okay, so you get anything that's kind of this purpley pink color. Um, actually, I think it's more pinkish. Uh, you get that from the variables. This, this purple is going to come from the input. Um, and it's the second one here. Read the analog pin. So read the analog pin, and we have connected our potentiometer to the analog pin A0. Okay, so that's the one we want. So you could you, there's a drop down, but I think it automatically has A0 in there for you. So that's the first bl block of code that you want to put in there. Next, the, the output pins, you want to set all of those equal to, to low. Okay, you want them all off to begin with. Okay, and then you're going to give certain conditions um, as to when you turn one of the lights on. So set all of those pins to low, just like we're doing. So you get your block here, and then you got three of them. Um, 9, 10, and 11 are all set to low. Okay, so that corresponds to these outputs, 9, 10, and 11 right here. Okay, the next thing you're going to need, um, and maybe... Um, I could take this apart a little bit for you, or I'll just I'll just talk you through it. So you're gonna need um, an if else. So one of these guys, okay. And it's it's become pretty big here in in my code, and it'll become pretty big in yours because we've nested another if else inside of it, okay. So you pull this guy out, and you can start here at the top, okay. What this is saying is if our potentiometer input is less than 341 okay so if it's less than 341 that means if it's up in this area right this was zero we, this is zero volts but remember the Arduino turns it into like a number okay and and there's all the way from zero up to 1023 so we want to divide well that's 1024 different numbers so if we divide um, by three then we have 341 and, and 681 as kind of cutoff points um, for dividing this into three sections um, for our three lights. Okay, so what we want is if we're less than 341, we're up here close to our ground, 
right? So up in this area, we're gonna set pin 11, which is our red light right here. We're gonna set pin 11 to high, okay? Otherwise, this else means otherwise, you're gonna do something else. You're not gonna have um, pin 11 high, okay? Within this else statement, we've actually put another if else, okay? And this if else says if the potentiometer input is less than 681, okay, which is that two thirds cutoff of, of 1024 or 1023 different um, numbers that the computer is gonna turn the voltage into. Um, so if, if the potenti in, potentiometer input reading that the Arduino gets is less than um, 681, then you're gonna sit, set pin 10 to high, okay? Which means turn on the yellow light. And then the else here, okay? So if it's not less than 341 and it's not less than 681, then um, we're gonna set pin nine, which corresponds to the green light, right? Pin nine, we're gonna set pin nine to high, okay? So this um, nested if else statements here uh, are what are gonna control um, what light comes on, okay? Um, if they're not meeting these conditions, then they're off, okay? Because we set them to be off right at the start. Okay, so again, we can watch with the code. Okay, it's green, green, green. As soon as I've hit, um, when I'm in here, I am not less than 341 because that occurs right about here. Okay, I'm also, um, I am less than 681. So the yellow light is on. Okay, as soon as I bring it over here, um, it's less than 341. So it reads this, if it's less than 341, cool. I set uh, the red pin or pin 11 um, to high. Okay, you can also take a look at um, the text um, code and um, and kind of compare it to what the block code is doing and you can kind of see um, here are if if else statements over here um, and uh, we have a couple other lines of code that we didn't have before when we just kind of had a timer for our stoplight um, so uh, that is stoplight number two um, of your tasks this week.